Hi everyone, there are four essential techniques for passing parameters with a GET request that you must know when working with your web applications. In this video, we'll discuss them all and provide examples for each technique. To start, we've already prepared a web API project with two model classes, the product class and product DTO. To simplify the mapping actions in our project, we already installed Automapper and prepared a mapping rule to map the data from the product class to the product DTO class. To better understand how Automapper works, we suggest watching our video that covers the topic in detail. The link will be in the description below. Now, let's open a product controller class and inspect the prepared data. We can see a private list populated with several products, which we are going to use as a result of our actions. You can also see the mapper interface injected inside the constructor. Now that we've seen all the prepared files, let's start covering the different ways to pass parameters to a GET action. Let's begin with query strings. In the GET method, we commonly use query strings to pass parameters. We include them in the URI as key value pairs separated by an equal sign and separate multiple parameters by an ampersand symbol. In this URI, category and brand are the query parameters with the values electronic and Sony. Now, one important note before we begin. When we work with query parameters, we have the option to use the from query attribute to bind parameters from the query string explicitly. However, the parameter binding process automatically converts requests data into strongly typed parameters. This process eliminates the need for explicit from query attribute usage. That said, let's create a get action without using the from query attribute. We need a HTTP get attribute first. Then, let's create a public action with the I action result return type and name it get products by category and brand. We will also add a string category parameter and the string brand. Then, inside the action, we get our products by extracting all the products where the category of the product equals our category parameter and the brand from the product equals the brand parameter and convert it to a list. Finally, we return the OK result using the mapper to map our result to the list of product DTO objects. Now, let's start the app and open Postman with an already prepared request. We can see that parameter names in our method signature align with the query parameter names in the request URI. So the framework automatically binds the values from the query string to the method parameters based on their names. Now, let's send the request. And we get our correct result, which means that we successfully sent our parameters as query strings with a GET request. Sometimes we may encounter situations where the parameter names in the method signature do not match the query parameter names. In such situations, we can explicitly use the from query attribute to bind the query parameters to the respective method parameters. To show that, Let's create another GET action. As usual, we need an HTTP GET attribute, but this time with the type manufacturer name. Then let's create a public I action result action named GET product by category and brand using from query and provide two parameters, but this time we will use the from query attribute, provide the name type, and then add the string category parameter. 
Let's do the same for the second parameter. The name will be manufacturer and then we add a string brand parameter. As you can see, we use the from query with the name type and from query with the name manufacturer attributes to bind the values of query parameters, type and manufacturer to the corresponding method parameters, category and brand. Now, let's simply copy the previous implementation and paste it into this action. To test this, let's again start the app and send another prepared request with two query parameters. The API filters the data and returns the result based on the query parameters, type and manufacturer. Now, we have to mention a few drawbacks of using query strings. Since there is a limit to the length of a URI, query parameters have a limited capacity for passing data. Additionally, query parameters are not secure because the values are visible in the URI, making them easy to intercept by malicious users. That said, let's continue with route parameters. We can use route parameters to pass data but in a different way. Route parameters are placeholders in the URI. We use route parameters to identify a specific resource or resources while the query parameters to sort filter those resources. We recognize route parameters by using curly braces containing a parameter name as part of the route template. The same way as with the query strings, the framework binds route parameters based on their names, allowing us to omit the from route attribute. However, there are scenarios where the parameter names in the method signature differ from the route parameter names. In such situations, we can use the from route attribute. So, let's create another get action without using from route attribute. To do that, we add an HTTP get attribute, but this time with the ID parameter. Then, we can create a public I action result action and simply name it get product by ID. Of course, we have to provide an int ID parameter. Inside the action, we extract the product from the list of products by using the first link method and provide a condition where the ID of the product is equal to the ID parameter. Finally, we return the OK result where we map our product to product DTO. Let's again test this. First, we'll start the app and then send a prepare request with the route parameter. The API utilizes the route parameter to identify the specific resource. To show the same example, but this time with the from route attribute, we can simply copy the previous action and paste it here. Now, let's change the route here to product ID and modify the parameter name to product ID. Also, let's modify the action name by adding using from route. Finally, in front of the ID parameter, let's add the from route attribute and provide the name product ID. You can see we define a from route with the name product ID attribute to bind the product ID parameter to the corresponding action method parameter. With this prepared, let's start the app and test this. Let's send a request to the endpoint. As you can see, API identifies the resource based on the route parameter we passed. Now that we know how to use both query strings and route parameters, we can see an example where we combine both. For that, we need another action. It will be an HTTP GET action with the brand as part of the route and the brand route parameter. As usual, the action is public, it returns I action result, 
and let's name it get products by brand and warranty. Here we will add two parameters, string brand to map the route parameter and int warranty to map from the query string. Inside the action, we will extract the products from the products list where each product has the brand property equal to the brand parameter and the warranty years property equal to the warranty parameter and convert it to a list. Finally, we return the OK result using the mapper to map our products to a list of product DTOs. Again, let's start the app and use the prepared request with both parameters to test our action. The API filters the products based on the route and query parameters. Now, let's continue with the request body. We typically use the request body for more complex or sensitive data that we cannot easily pass in the URI. It is commonly used in the HTTP POST, PUT and PATCH methods to send data to the server. Note that according to the best practices of RESTful API, we don't recommend passing parameters to the request body in a GET method, although it is possible. By default, the HTTP methods GET, HEAD, OPTIONS and DELETE do not bind data implicitly from the request body. To bind data explicitly for the request body, marked as JSON, we can use the from body attribute. Also, we can use the from query attribute as we did in the pagination video, which you can find in the description below. For this example, we are going to create another get action that accepts the request body using the from body attribute. So, let's start with the HTTP get attribute and add a category as part of our route. Then we need a standard action named get products by category and add a from body attribute first and then our product DTO parameter. To extract products, we filter the products list and use the where method specifying the category of each product from the list must match the category from the product parameter. We will convert this result to a list as well. Finally, we return the OK result using the mapper to map our product's result to a list of a product DTO. To test this, let's start the app and open the postman. Let's send a request that contains a body to the endpoint. And there we go. We can see our result. I would like to hear do you send parameters to the request body for the GET requests and why? This is definitely what developers do all the time in different situations, so it would be great to hear from you as well. Finally, let's cover the header parameters. Header parameters are another way to pass data to a GET action using the from header attribute. Unlike query and route parameters, header parameters are not part of the URI. Instead, we can send them as part of the request headers. Let's start with one more HTTP GET attribute with the category brand as part of the route. Then we need a public action with the same return type and let's name it get products via headers. For our parameters, we first need the from header attribute and then the string category parameter. Let's do the same for the string brand parameter. Now inside the action, we will have a similar implementation where we extract the products using the where method and provide a condition where each product's category must match the category parameter and also 
the brand from the product must match the brand parameter. We also convert the result to a list. Finally, we return the OK result and map the filtered products to a product DTO list. One last time, let's start the app and use a prepared request to test this. We can see the category and brand header parameters. Now, let's send the request. And we have our correct result. That said, let me hear your opinion on which way you are using the most in your projects. Feel free to share that by dropping a comment down there. It would be great to read about what you use the most and why is that. With this, we will finish the video. Please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you like the video and want to support us. Of course, there's that bell button, you can click to get notifications from our channel. Thank you for watching and see you soon in the next one. Until then, all the best.